So now it's October and even in the morning it was super chilly, 7 degrees here. The sun is out and we quickly want to show you what's flowering in the garden still here in October, which is quite a lot still. We have a really great combination here. We have, it's called, called uh, Grönlandsk Marguerite. It's like whitish and some pinkish uh, combination here. It's a low uh, Marguerite. Closer, we planted close to the border and compared to the white ox eye, it flowers, the white ox eye flowers much early in the summer. But this is just flowering now and it's in a great combination with the, uh, the being a Bampton, a low of the normal like this one over here, super tall. I'll just show you here, it's really a taller uh, verbena over here. But it, this one has a great uh, contrast to the to the Marguerite because it has dark foliage and these really it's almost still flowering a little bit but pinkish co uh, color of flowers and it's self-sowing so we do have to collect uh, seedlings that will sprout here around uh, the mother plant but that's a really nice one and if you go further up here we have one that's just started to flower I'll jump in here and it's the, the storm hat, also called uh, Venus Vaughn. It looks a little bit like a, uh, like a delphinium. And it's uh, just opening, it has lots of flower buds. As you can see my height here, I'm 183. And it, it's the same height. So it's really far over to the fence and gives a nice contrast. And it just really lost with these um, yeah, purple blue color. The whole plant is uh, poisonous, so you do need to be aware if you have it in the garden, if you have small grandkids or smaller young ones in the garden, have a really, a, it's important for us also. We talk to our son now, he's 11, so he's okay now, but do be aware when you have poisonous plants, because a lot of plants in the garden is actually poisonous, either the leaves or the seeds or some of the roots. So do check when the plants you have in the garden, which ones are safe for the kids. Yeah. So, oh, I'm uh, just saying, and we yeah. also that's one reason why it's planted back near the fence because then, if a neighbor wanted to walk by and grab a snack, <laughs> the plant's far enough away, so it, that's another way to keep <laughs> if you do want a poisonous plant. And, and our neighbors don't reach over the fence and snack on it, so we're and we're we had retired people, but now they young, young ones m moved in. But it's really nice, and it gets uh, like a bulb, and uh, that's how it. Uh, propagates gets more but you can also um, sow them from seeds. Uh, we have some smaller plants in the greenhouse that we have sown from seeds and this one the funny story about this one we got it from the neighbor over here they had like um, in old days there was a zoo there like I don't know what not they didn't have any elephants or anything but they had like a zoo the, there was like a little gate it's still there you can enter into where you paid with a ticket so they have a, like a like a wall around and she has a bunch of those and it's like a lot of sun here sunny half shade they they thrive in and they are really really pretty and if you have a garden with lots of wind these are really great they don't i don't have to stake them or anything and the foliage is really nice but i try not to touch too much and then afterwards <laughs> lick my finger or anything because it's uh it is really poisonous, so do We're glad be you don't do that, Lars. <laughs> right. And right next to the Cosmos, that pink and purple That's combination. That's really nice. Um, it's really pretty. And those, of course, I have my, the, what do you call it? Okay, I'll try not to go through here without touching them. But the, the Cosmos here have great uh, seeds. So I have my seed glasses on. I always focus on because the perennials or the f uh, summer flowers here, they do, uh, finish flowering on different times throughout the season to always look what is ready to get collected. So the cosmos here, when they're all brown like this, I will collect them, dry them in a tray and then keep all the seeds for uh, over winter in coffee filters for next year because the cosmos is a summer flower. So it also self sows So last year we also had them in the same area. We didn't put any fertilizer in because we actually just yesterday had two lovely ladies visit the garden which is open whenever you come to Denmark. But they said, why is our so green, the, the cosmos and just the bush? It's because they have really, they stand in very nutritious or like you fertilized your cosmos. So that's an absolute no-no because then you won't get a lot of flowers. They love really poor soil and then you get a bunch of flowers. So here we have the 
geranium stalk in it and uh, it's still flowering really nicely here. We do not have a lot of this one. This is Roseanne and um, it really has a nice, just the inside, just the whole. Let me get closer. Ah, there we go. We showed this one at that flower bed, my favorite flower bed at the church grounds. Remember that one? You have a lot mm. of that over there. That's right, in a really uh, a big area, so it really shows Makes more. a bigger impact. But yeah. the idea here is going to uh, cover all this because we do have a lot of the, and this also just pretty in a vase, I'll take it up now because it's finished. It has a lot of, again, seeds here. Isn't that pretty? But the Allium purple yeah. sensation is really nice, just also dried. And they finish so nice. So they finish yeah. really early, but it's nice when a plant, like the Flomus, we've talked about that before, mm. how pretty they are when they, when they finish. Yeah. So the idea is here, the, the geranium is gonna, the rosin gonna cover all this and be all purple. Because otherwise we do tend to just have like a lot of green and we wanna really, that's why our theme is really like mixed colors, the uh, color combination is really lots of different uh, plants. Yeah. Speaking of color, that sedum has done a lot <gasps> yes. since last time we showed. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Oops, that's and the weed. Sometimes it pops up. <laughs> A little bit neat. Oh no, oh, I didn't no. get with the roots, so Man. great, that's gonna come again. We lost the whole Look at that. <laughs> mystery. Okay, that was huge. <gasps> wow. But if you if you look closely, there's not a lot of weeds. We just though, lost a subscriber. <laughs> maybe we gained some because it's like wild diversity. Oh my weapons. goodness. No, but because we did a lot of really heavy weeding in the beginning, like March, April, and then it's just placed really closely. So they grow uh, in and over each other and really covers the And the that's weeding. been it, let's be mm. honest. We did another big weed um, end of July, a big weed, especially mm. around the, the edge here, around the stones. And that's been about it. We're not the biggest weeders, as oh, you can and see. Remember those? A lot of people had a laugh about that on, when we visited the, the church grounds. <laughs> What was it? I always forget. Is it Susan with the black eye or the black eyed black Susan? Black-eyed Susan. Black-eyed Susan. But look at that. That's oh, really yeah. pretty. We have some more up in the in the back, which is where I'm headed okay. to show. But, Speaking of things that are still flowering, the blanket flower. Ta-da! I've gone a little easier on the deadheading these days because we want more and more seeds. So, but my goodness, that is thing still is still nicely. really flowering. We've had to stake it. And it's, yeah, it needs to be staked or propped up again. But I don't know. It's October, Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas. <laughs> it's time to just lay down. Show them the butterfly bush here, the butterfly candy. It's, it's kind of finishing though. Yeah, it's it still is. doing something, but. It really has. Lots of people say that it's, it's self sowing. I actually never had butterfly. Uh, just come up in the ground. Maybe also because I do deadhead these because then the plant will produce more flower buds. So all these dead ones you could trim back. But it, it makes flowers on new stems. So you could do in April, do a little pruning back depending on also, this is a small compact one. So it's here at the border. You can have it in pots as we also have. Or the taller ones in the back that's also finished. You can grow them tall as a bush or make it more like trim the side. So it's like a, like a tree, almost tree yeah, trunk. But they're so easy to take cuttings yeah. of. So why collect the seeds? Yeah. The sneeze weed is still flowering. And the fun thing about this in Danish, it's called sopel, which means sun wife or the wife of the sun. Isn't that beautiful? So like we, we call the, what was the, the snow in summer? In Danish, it's chicken intestines. So that didn't work out so well. But this sneeze weed in English, mm, not so great. The wife of the sun, how beautiful. I'll come closer so they can. But look at that. That's okay. one of our favorites. So look you can that. see why the sun married her. Gorgeous. And there'll be some seeds ready in that. Uh, this guy's totally finished. Oh, we and showed the, it was new in our garden. The quiz, what? Yeah, these beautiful pink, pink, pink flowers. Yeah. yeah, they were so fluffy. But uh, you can trim the heads off. Yeah. Those. The dahlias, you can see, if you remember, we had that big windstorm. So a lot of our boom, boom whites are now over here. My goodness, this happened yesterday. Oh, shoot. Okay, so 
I think it's about to Jeepers go creepers. soon. They have to go anyway when the frost, and I think it's just around the corner. So when the first frost will come, we will start taking those back. Yeah, it was really cold this back. morning, you yeah. guys. So that's, at least the dahlias are still here. The, this is one I wanted to show you, the Salvia Veridae. This painted sage, it's finishing as well. This one looks really good, I'm quite surprised. I just noticed the other ones up there this morning. So even the bracts are kind of getting done. But the great thing about it, it has been beautiful since July. I mean, we're getting so much color, so much impact from this little plant. We've collected some seeds, so that's ready to go. A lot of people that have visited the garden have asked about this one. So we're gonna be sure to get some more of that. But it's definitely finishing up here. Maybe this one gets more, gets more sun. I don't know, I have to pay attention to it. Here, but, this, a, it sorry, but it is a summer flower though, so. Yeah, but I'm just surprised that this one is still way, way more right. colorful than the two up there at the front. Sorry, now I'm deep in thought. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> now, now you all just have to sit here and watch me think. But yeah, that this tepapila or we're also going to have to move it very, very, very soon. We've talked right. about that before, but it's definitely climbing over our path. But the good thing is, here in October, look at all the color that we still have. We're still having this. We're still having flowers there. We're losing a lot. A lot of our echinacea are really finishing up, but being smart with some of these has made a big difference this year. Some of our other ones, like this Rebecca, I mean, it has, it just keeps falling. It keeps flowering, but it keeps falling. We have stakes back here in the back. Mm. Maybe you come back here, Lars, and we mm. show. Someone's, someone's asked recently, because our garden is so packed, they asked, do we have to stake things? And the answer is yes, but maybe not in the way you think. So if you'll come back here, this is how we stake. The question was, do you stake things or because things grow so closely together, do they just hold themselves up? And no, yes and no. So yes, sometimes they just hold themselves up because they're really packed. Other times we've used things like this. This is how we stake. Literally the forest. with a piece of branch from the forest. So usually we'll have two or three of these sort of cross beamed in there and that's what's holding it up. So that's how we stake. We don't really use metal stakes. We're very not into spending a lot of money in case you haven't noticed. We collect seeds, we divide perennials. The garden for us has to be a place that we can enjoy without feeling garden poor. And one of the ways that we save money is just by using sticks that we collect in the forest. So we're blessed to have a lot of forest here as well. But we, we definitely do have to stake that. Yeah. So the middle flower bed is still, still doing pretty nicely. A lot of the things have finished, like this one, the saxifraga. We were really deadheading it pretty heavy. And then I stopped. A lot of you have asked who wins the argument about deadheading versus seed collecting, and obviously I lose. <laughs> uh, so we let it go to seed, which means we sort of sacrificed some of the flowers. But there's still a lot of stuff to look at here. Like even these. And the CO here is really, this is a lot of fuel ash for that too. It's still, it's almost finished, but has a lot of, again, my seed glasses on. A bunch of seeds are coming here. We have them in whites and this, this is um, Blue Fortune and it's flowered. And the bees are still really coming in it. And they use it for cooking. It's like a, almost like a liquid. See the bees there? Oh, and that's another great thing. I know everybody, Everybody really seems to be interested in wishing the summer gone and start. Yeah, we're going to carve a pumpkin too, but my goodness, just enjoy what's. We like to enjoy what's, what's here and we enjoy what's finishing and the finishing of it isn't so bad. So we don't have to rush into the next season. And we really, you have no idea how we love the blue skies because now in Denmark, when we wake up, it's dark very soon. The time will change end of October, October and then it's dark when we've come home from work as well. So that's going to be, we love the, also this kind of season. Yeah, but still give still. the bees something to enjoy. Yeah. What else is down here? And the, look at the Skunhus oil here still flowering next to the, that's a really great combination too, like yellows and then the asters here in a little cute uh, pink color. 
and even the foliage is really nice. The pleated twitten here that will just grow over a little bit wild here. Uh, also really nice foliage. Ground You'll cover. notice what's not in our garden. Well, that seems pretty. The chameleon plant. Ta-da! <laughs> we got rid of we that We might sucker. find some next year. Mm. This is also grown from seeds like the, the Sahara. It's very pretty. Like autumn mix color, really burnt. It's starting to be finished, so I'm leaving some for the... And these ones are not really, you can't, you know, some of them come back next year, we'll trim it back, but depending on how hard the frost is gonna be, we have to sow again, re-sow. This is the one I wanted to show, this, the Salvia Verita. Oh, yeah, see, it's just not quite as intense as it once was, and that's okay. So here again, we have some geraniums, really lovely for cover, really a lot of ground cover. And over here, some more. Did you just pick it? I picked it, yeah. So you could see that I want we to show We had like three. You. See, I want to show the inside. Hold on, let so me get closer. So many different kinds of geraniums. That's very pretty. Right? Wow. So they really still cover. And again, I, I trimmed this back in July, the salvia. We have a pink one here, flowers again. We have a bunch of things that we, trim back after our holiday in July and like even the white spore baldrian is really still flowering putting adding seeds now uh, almost finished but the second flowering and in this one we had a very special um, butterfly in comes from the from the warmer uh, weather further Why, down was it called butterfly hawk uh, moth yeah in Danish or it's a hell butterfly some, was it something with a hawk something like a superhero hummingbird yeah, it looks like a hummingbird and people comment and, oh, uh, is that a uh, like a hummingbird? And we were like, no, that's only where the inlands are in, in USA. We, it, that really reminds me about uh, the hummingbirds because it's too cold here in Denmark for hummingbirds. But they are really nice. Um, so we, it really like, it, it's so fast and it comes like every two years. So it's very rare. I don't see it a lot in the garden. Yeah. So I, I was out with a compost tossed it and yelled at the boys, come and see the duohele. And it was like really fast, but I got it on video. Yeah, hawk moth, I'll have to, <laughs> we'll write the name because we cannot remember. Oh, maybe the last one before, because we actually are busy. We have to collect also some seeds that's ready at the echinacea later and some other ones. But look at this one, it's really a late comer. This is a, called a Fransk anemone. It's like bulbs we put in the early spring, but that's a, like a, a spring flower. It has totally not understood it's seasons. No. We look blame at, it on climate change. It's and look real. at, we still have bees here in the, the yeah. really love the salvia there. Because everyone else has cut down stuff. We are enjoying what's left. Let me show the toad lily while we're here. I know every time we, we get a chance, but look, it is coming. So many little flowers. Oh, there's a bee in that too. Really? Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. Can don't, I see it? Don't disturb it though. Ah, there it is. I'll try. Look at him. Let's take a minute, everyone. Oh, that's pretty. Take a screenshot. There's your screensaver, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's pretty, right? Look at that. And that can be in sun or half shade. I definitely hope it's gonna so get more. Okay, should we get going? Yeah, the wallflower, what else? Figs, we've picked, we've eaten those. Yeah, yeah no more. No, we didn't bushes, have so many of the birds attack them. Yeah, we did. And I don't know. And look at our Oh, to... here's another thing. Huh? This is called a born, born home fig. Okay, oh, yeah. that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. we, oh, there's one. Right there. Yeah, here, there's one. But we don't know if this is the kind of fig that is, what do you call it, fertilized by wasps or not. So if you know if the born home fig is fertilized by wasp, please let us know. Because I don't know how into that I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now it's time to. Seed collect. Let's do it. Ta-da! Okay, we're gonna start with our echinacea. Hold on, let me get close. We're going to get very close here with the camera. All right, yeah. take it away, Lars. So I just wanna... Give me that step-by-step. Step. Here we go. So the echinacea, it's in flower like this, but you can see it's almost finishing. Yeah, that's... But, but that's it's flowered flower. for months though. It's really a, a pretty one. So when it looks like this, means it's not ready. Okay, it's not that all light brown. greenish brown, yeah. right? And you can see some are already doing their, their own job. 
self sewing over here. I could take that one. I'll take two. Here you can see it's starting to just uh, take the... So notice that it's really brown, which means they're really dry and ready to go. Try with this one. And do collect the seeds. Look at the weather, super dry. These ones, are they wet or anything? It's really uh, not a good time to collect them. So do try and make them when it's, uh, when it's all dry. Because I have tried and taken some and it quickly rots. So take them when they're all nice and dry. Okay, now what? Good, let's go over here. We will just use the trampoline for table. We're gonna miss this trampoline when we ever get rid of it. So I have a tray here, just any tray will do. It's a good idea to either pull them out of the, the part here, the seat part, and then make sure it dries really nicely. We will put ours in the shed, unheated shed, until they're super dry, and then later on we're gonna, some of them we're gonna put this. Then we'll put them in coffee fillers with the little name on, and some we will also sew now because they will they will um, germinate when it's like uh, changing temperatures, both cold and warm uh, temperatures. You can also do it in early early spring. Add some outside in the tray. So let's try here, and they are. Do be careful because it's almost like a porcupine. In Danish, we call it like a pinswing, very spiky. Here. So if you, we will take the one that was almost throwing the seeds by itself out there. I'll take a look at all these goodies here. So what important is, it's not the whole thing, like the tip here, this is not the seed. So you do have to go down and find the part at the end of that, like for example here, here's one. So those little thick ones, little bodies down here, those are the seeds. So okay. try and, and, and try and do, I'll just put them in here now so they can really dry for the next few days. You can either sit hand pick if you have the time for that, but I, I, I simply don't have the time for that. So I'll take all those, even the leftover flour, doesn't matter, I'll sprinkle that. The whole thing I'll sprinkle a lot of them in a tray. And then I'll use some, uh, some soil for that of course, and sprinkle it on. It will take too much time to sit and hand pick. You can use a, tweezer or something uh, and, and put them in. But I just sprinkle it all in and I'll get the same amount of success, same amount of seedlings uh, sprouting, even though I don't take that out. So, so that's okay. I have another one here. Let me try and see maybe, oh, it's ready too. See here, see it comes easily off here. So it's the end here you can see. So it's the end of that one. That's the seed again, that little Wait, I call it buddy, uh, but down there. So this one is easily. So do let it dry here for some time, maybe a few days. Really be sure it's dry before you try and, and, and sew it here. There we go. That's Look the at all that. And that's just from two? That's from two, it's like maybe 100 new plants. Free plants. You can either, yeah, have a bigger group out of it or like, have it like um, repeated somewhere else in the garden because it it is really a drought tolerant plant and it flowers for a long time and here in late autumn it's still we still have places where it's still flowering with new flower buds. Great let's do some more of those. Okay that's that one. Okay now we're on to our next one for this video the Agalaya. Come close and hear how it shakes you can really hear the seeds. We gotta put our microphone next to it. Okay. I will now lean in with my microphone. Okay, ready? I, I don't know if you could hear that, but I was... <laughs> I'll try. I can hear. Yeah. Okay. If not, you just had 25 seconds of us... Shaking. Yeah, shimmying at the Agalai. It's a little snail here in the same color. Look at that, it looks the same. Camouflaged. Oh, lucky us. Yeah, I'll put it on. Right. Yeah, so we're letting him go in the forest. Okay, so, so here you can really hear they are ready, the Akalai, and those are really, let me see here, see if they come, oh, look at those really beautiful black ones. That was so easy. That was the easy one, right? It's like an infomercial. So those I don't put in the trays because it's, they are so dry. You can see a lot of perennials when they are this color really, f you think it's just dead, you just want to toss it in the compost, don't, because it has a bunch of new babies. 
So these I don't put in a tray because they are really dry. So I just dump them in here again in a coffee filter. And, and the, the coffee filter keeps them dry. We drink a lot of coffee. That's how you spell Agalaya. And well, these are new coffee filters, Lars. Don't confuse them. These are, this yeah, is it's Agalaya. not a used coffee filter I use. That's Agalaya with the word blue on it in Danish. Alan, he loves his coffee. No, but we, these are really nice to have. So I'm going to take some more. And just so I have something we to hold it up. Oh, it's shaking. We give it a little shake. And see, so if I see. I'll take them in here first so you can see. We're ready for Spain. We can just bring these guys so, in. Let me take, take a little bit castanets. more. Castanets. Yeah, see? You can even Look give them that. a little pins here if you want. Look there we that. go. And these I'll also start sowing already now because a lot of them when you sow here in autumn, they will flower already next year. Look at those. There yes, Agalaya. There we go. That's ready too. So we intentionally leave some of these up there's one, but some of most of our agalaya we cut down yeah. when they stop flying. Then you just leave some, yeah, because you know you're going to collect seeds. And there's a little bit for the birds, maybe there. Watch this shortcut. You can skip the hand and go right to the coffee filter. Oh, mind blowing! Whoa, <laughs> there's a tip. Okay. So I don't have to use my hand. Wow. <laughs> it was just to show. I know, them. I know, I know, I know. Okay. I know. People think we already argue so okay, much. Okay, and then I actually just. To keep it just so they don't fall out, I bend the ends. You can also use a piece of tape or a, a clipper or a clip. And then bend them like this. Ta-da! And then it's close. They don't fall out. Cute. That would such a shame if you go and they uh, seats all over the wow. table. Wow, and then we'd have them all over our path? Yay! <laughs> no, so we leave them in and then we have them in some trays in there. Super nice. So the last one we're going to do for this video is the liatres. Ta-da! And... If you're, if you're new to seed collecting, if you'd like to do it, the, it's kind of a same process over and over and over. Once it's brown, once it's dry, you can either put them in that tray like we did with the echinacea to make sure they're dry before you pack them away, or you can go straight to the, to the coffee filters. We use the coffee filters because it, we found that it keeps them dry. So it's kind of the same process the whole time, but here is the liatris. And later we are not going to do the digitalis, but... We're do, gonna do one. I'm just taking a little bit. You can and see the seeds falling off that and one. And they are really, you get a lot of those. So I just, you kind of just pick them here. You can also just do, actually I think I'm gonna hold it and then you can just rub it. You do like that. And then just rub it down there like that. Look at them That's all. That's an easy there. way. And they kind of get a bulb and they, they do take some time. Some of them, they flower the second year you, you grow them. So if you go ahead and do it now, you, there's a chance that it will flower already next year. Because if you, if you pre-sow indoors next spring, it might need a, a, another year before it will flower. So a lot of the perennials here, see, are just full of these. You mean if you go ahead and if you sow them now, then there's a chance that they'll flower next year. Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. Because otherwise, it's, uh, some of them do take some time, the perennials. So you have to be really patient with them because they have a long, maybe growing period before the, they will produce the, the, the flowers. Yeah. But these are really easy and just really sculptural. Yeah. I mean, and look how many. And, and if you want to leave some for the birds and the animals to eat all winter, do that too. And the pollinators really love this, actually, by the way. Yeah, you see when a it's lot in flower, insects. right? Yeah. Okay, I'm okay now the last one for the video. Promise. <laughs> the foxglove here obviously is finished. I don't think anyone... Oh, it's blurry. There we go. I don't think anyone would deny the finishedness of this one. Mm. And that one has really a bunch of... Oh, sorry, I need my seeds. Uh, it has a bunch of seeds if it didn't already throw its seeds. And it flowers the second year, so... Oh, there's a... Oh, There's a ladybug. ladybug. Oh, can we put it on the floor there? Go there. Oh, great, it fell down. But these ones flower on the second year and they are biannual, so they will produce the, they call it the rosette, the green foliage the first year. The second year, the bam, the big skyscraper comes. Yeah. And it's really cottage style garden for us to have those really so pretty. And the bees love them. And then they throw the seeds. You can throw them, sprinkle them everywhere or just put them in trays too. I hope there's some left. <gasps> See here, these are tiny and you just sprinkle those on top of the dirt. 
they love light to germinate. So don't cover them with a lot of dirt. You can also just do like that some places and they'll come up. That's one method. Or just put some in this and then in the tray. Then I have a bit more control of how big they get. I can just... And we can also... Yeah, you have a lot more control. And you can also choose the best um, ones to pot on, the best ones to plant. Yeah, this one was a apricot color, this one. Ooh. Okay, so I got a and run. it came up really late. This one, again, mm. this is that new flower bed. So we weren't yeah. quite sure. You know, the other flower beds we've had, or this one over here we've had, so we knew it was going to come up. But this one we had planted and it came up quite late, surprisingly. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. Right. now we will get back. Okay. and actually collect seeds instead of stopping and talking about them. Hey! So thanks so much for watching. There's still a lot flowering here in October. Yes, it's getting colder. Thank God that the sun is out, so it's getting a little more tolerable out here. But as the days get shorter and the temperature starts dropping, we're going to see the garden really start fading away. But for now, we're very thankful for what we still have here in October. Even some new ones some new additions that we introduced you today that are just now starting to show up. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, let us know what's still growing in your area. We love when, when you let us know. For, for example, we were digging in the garden at the church the other day and somebody wrote about how soft the dirt was compared to where they are. Things like this we think are so fascinating. So if you have any comments about what you're growing or, or what it's like growing where you are, please let us know. Um, one of the best things about this channel that we started a few months ago was that we can really hear and learn about gardens all over the world. So thanks for that. And thanks for joining us so far today.